Hello, you're watching our new accent today. Let's talk about Yu Fengxing, Legend of Shenli. This is a 39 episode fantasy drama that's been airing on Tencent and Mango in China. Based on the novel Ben Wang Zaizi, written by the author Jiu Lu Feixiang, she's got uh, many dramas that have been adapted in recent years. This time, it's a bit different because it is the long-awaited collaboration again between actress Zhao Liying and actor Lin Gengxing, princess agent Chu Qiaozhuan. I believe that's so the entry point of quite a lot of international audiences to Chinese drama land as well. I remember exactly when that drama aired on the first day, which is like midnight. How crazy the like comment was on the screen back then, given some of them might not be real. And also the background data of the airing of the drama definitely is not real. But anyway, it was quite a buzz. And I know a lot of people who are watching my channel have watched Chu Qiaozhuan and you're a fan of it. Personally, I wasn't a huge fan of the drama, but it's not like I didn't know how big it was. Giving all that background information there, let's talk about the drama itself. I have started watching it on day one when it started airing and pretty much followed it daily. I have to say, after the first couple of episodes, it became a chore for me to click it open every day. I just do it because it's my job type of thing, but not like I enjoyed it. It's hard for me to give it a rating because I don't even feel I'm 100% in the story. Most of the time, I'm skipping. I'm very shallowly touching the water of the story. I often zone out, I get distracted, and it seems like I watch two episodes every day and nothing happens. So, is it a fun drama? Not really. <laughs> is it filled with interesting plots and characters and turns and hook you? No. Is there anything I want to say that's good about this drama? I try hard, I can't. Really think of one point that's like, at least it's worth you checking out a bit. I really cannot find that. Not even for the sake of renting and having fun. Because it's not like ridiculously bad, but it's just so mediocrely there. A couple of things I enjoyed, at least at the beginning of the drama, they have for extensive period of time, the female lead not as a human, but as a CG the chicken. That doesn't really like a chicken. It's, it's like a cartoon chicken with feathers that has heart shapes. Looks like a little bit animation styled cute mixed with a bit phoenix, a bit whatever bird. The CG is not like so well made that you think it's real, but it's cutely made that you think it's animation-wise actually pretty adorable. And the dubbing of the chicken is actually a lot more animated than the human version that you'll see later. Also at the beginning, you have um, a lot of comedy elements. By no means masterpieces of comedy writing, but at least it's fun, such as like chucking the whole water container up to the mountain and then putting a broom in it. The whole fact that uh, they know People who come in watching the drama probably all have watched the Chu Qiaozhuan or at least know it and know the meme. The male lead is in the lake and everybody has been calling for like, what, seven years? In drama land, they're trying to fish him out. Every time Zhao Ling as an actress who enters a body of water or in Chinese drama land, period drama land, anybody who has a plot of going into a lake, there will be a live comment on it calling <laughs> that character. Go and grab Yu Wenyue. He is still at the bottom of the lake. So the drama very cleverly at the beginning of the setup of characters already give you that ring enactment between these two actors. This time, the guy falls into the river and the girl goes in and actually managed to save him, but to put a spin on it and kind of cancel out the seriousness in the way that she actually saved him by grabbing his hair and pulling his scalp. Those are the parts that I laughed and I'm like, yeah, cute. Then the story itself is just so common in fantasy idol drama land and the setup is so normal and everything just happens according to schedule and you know as a seasoned watcher of Chinese dramas how exactly everything is gonna pan out it becomes like going through the motions every time a new scene starts you just know exactly how it's gonna develop and where it's gonna end and what people are gonna do it's fully 100% predictable you can only enjoy the drama if you actually enjoy just looking at the people right you enjoy Lin Gengxing's performance you enjoy Zhao Ling's presence then that will be fun otherwise itself is just like let's go through a couple of specific points that contributed to my extremely laid back and lazy attitude towards this drama number one i don't like how it looks color is really bad since i just talked about huan yanling like the texture of things on camera whether it's costume and lighting this drama is worse than that one it's airing on tencent and mango at the same time mango doesn't use that much of a filter to smooth out people's skin tencent actually makes it worse and then they definitely put more effort on smoothing down lin gengxing and zhao Yin instead of other people one is probably they don't want to spend that much time and budget on supporting roles. the other is even if they don't make them look super pretty their fandoms and their teams is too small to complain or maybe it's just because they're too young to actually need that much smoothing sorry about that but it's true the two leads are smoothed so badly in certain shots that you cannot even read their big 
expression. It's not even like micro. Don't even think about that. There's no detail of their performance. Also, don't like the color grading. The overall very orangey tone just looks bad. It's like everybody is just basically doing money laundry with this drama. As if they completely gave up on at least put some effort in making it look acceptable. Extending from point number one is like who did their styling and makeup and hair and costume. Particularly Zhao Ling's eyeliner. Oh, and also her hair is not that well done either. Like most of the time when you look at close-up of her hair, it's either not combed well or it's like weird things coming out. And then her eyeliner, really, really, I have to say it again, it's the worst eyeliner on any <laughs> leading actresses in Chinese drama that I've seen in years. Whoever did that should get fired and never allowed to be a makeup artist ever. As for Lin Gengxing, <sighs> He doesn't look like a sickly man at the beginning of the drama when he is in human realm as a normal human. What part of Lin Gengxi is like when he stands there do you think like he's sick? He looks like he can just haul 100k of corn in a sack on his back and go to the farm and work now. Every time he acts weak and sick I laugh. And also in terms of being that highest immortal possible for God for you to be in Chinese drama land, you need to almost have that I drink do. I don't need any substance and I'm light as a feather. You need to have that sort of being able to carry very flowy fabric on you and make you look like skinny tree so that it can blow on you with that light air. Now it's unfortunate that you have to be really thin for period dramas. Usually it's because costumes have too many layers and if you're not thin you look like a bulky bear. He is by no means fat but he doesn't have the best shape for period drama. He's just too heavy. His presence. <laughs> I cannot fathom that he is actually this high god, right? <laughs> Who comes out of a cloud and weightless. His very grounded heaviness just that comes with what he looks like and how he walks and all that mannerism <laughs> is constantly bringing me out of the drama and I don't know, high god is just not Lin Gengxing's forte. Third point, the plot is so old. The two actors are actually too old for the roles and the type of drama and the genre of idol fantasy drama. Zhao Ling actually has moved on already. But then like this is like one step back, probably just to tie up all the uh, past of her idol drama in the career. Even within the setup tropes of characters that you've seen a million times, it's not even well done. No engaging conversations, no clever comedies, no constant tiny things that happens out of expectation that intrigues you. It's no stimuli, it's just everything expected and boring. Fourth thing, the whole Nu A Nan O. So the girl is the alpha and the guy is Omega, at least at the beginning, is on such a superficial level because it's a fake one. No matter how strong a girl appears to be, she actually is no comparison to the guy because the guy is a lot higher. He is like the master of the universe and only left one who has the biggest power that exists in this whole fantasy world. And he only just covers it up or you know at the beginning so that she's not aware but once she becomes like aware of it she's like okay no matter how hard I try I can die trying to come into this battle use all my strength to fight against whatever evil and this guy just snaps his finger and all that disappears I'm like ah, okay so much so for alpha girl and omega guy hmm. you know it's always like no matter how bad they set up the male lead as in fantasy drama land to start with whether their power is temporarily suspended or whatever eventually it's always gonna be he's actually super powerful <laughs> and then it's gonna go through the set motion of for our lead couple one of them is gonna sacrifice themselves and die in the way can get destroyed but don't worry they're gonna come back it's like they're nirvana and then the other person will have to die after that has happened because they have to sacrifice something for something they're gonna come back too kind of always follows that pattern. Sometimes they don't really show that person coming back, like in Tang Lan Jue or in, you know, like Starry Love, like, but you know, they're coming back. It's like on the brink of coming back, it cuts it. The bigger sacrifice is gonna get a bigger reward at the end. And so everybody has this safety net. Now only the supporting roles will not have that. They're just gonna be used and die and that's it. It's not Game of Thrones. It's not like your head gets chopped off and you really die, right? Nobody really dies. So the fact that Zhao Ling's character recently just died is like, who cares? She's a phoenix, so she's gonna come back. <laughs> you have still, what, 14, 13 episodes left? You paid her lead actress money and she's not gonna go away just yet. Nobody really gets threatened, therefore their suffering and their sacrifice doesn't count. 
There are things that are also absolutely stupid and unbearable that comes to major supporting roles. For example, Qing Ye Shangsheng, right? The guy who is also a high god who got kind of like punished by Tian Dao. Let's just say nature's way, universe's rules, because he falls in love with a person or a human being or an individual where he's not allowed to do so because he's too powerful, like all the gods are. He gets pushed into reincarnation over and over again forever. There's no end to that. That's a sentence forever and every. Lifetime, he is destined to miss his true love, so he will never succeed at having a happy life with his true love. That's his punishment. Why punish him in that way? Why do you have to bring a girl who hasn't done anything wrong? It's only because she's loved by a guy who is just way too powerful to love anyone. Therefore, she has to suffer as well, lifetime after lifetime, just because heaven wants to punish the god. Therefore, you human just like go with it and just suffer forever too. I'm like who. Do you think you are high god first, and also like heaven's rules? Like what kind of unjust rule that is? If you want to punish this high god, why don't you just make him born blind always, or always like not having full limbs, or always get like terminally sick with terrible diseases, or always end up in really poor family, or always being a slave, or I don't know, always end up in war and being chopped up? You can punish. On his own forever, without having to take other people into that whole cycling of misfortune. We're watching a fantasy idol drama. We don't need this. We have plenty of contemporary dramas that raise our blood pressure. And then, if I want to go more into like complaining about other things about this drama, I can I can talk about a lot of smaller points. But basically, overall, I really <sighs> tried hard to find good things I can talk about this drama. You know, like. Silver lining kind of situation, and I can't find any. I find it's extremely boring, outdated, poorly made. Maybe it's not as zoned out and as bad as Yu Fei, but it's close enough. I never really hoped for Yu Fengxin to be anything great, honestly, because based on what I know about how this production was like going or what it's made for, I am just like no way. What it ended up being, the end result is pretty much within my expectation. I'm not surprised by it at all. I just feel it's a sad situation. <laughs> I feel this type of projects. I just hope they can just stop happening. Do something else. If you have the same money, same manpower, same kind of whatever GDP you can create by making such a drama, maybe just pick a different script, a little bit unusual and new than this. As a drama reviewer, I've had enough. I don't ever want to watch another drama like this ever again. I don't recommend it to any. Anybody who wants to watch it, it's like you have so many other things to do better for your life. I mean, go on YouTube and watch videos that teaches you how to actually do something in your life. Repaint your house or learn how to make a sourdough. Like that, that will make a lot more better use of your time than watching this. So, sorry if you like to be functioning. <laughs> I guess、uh, you've heard something that I've just said that completely does not agree with you. But hey, this is life. Deal with it. That's it. My opinion on Yu Fengxin: Legend of Shen Li, and I'm not gonna keep watching it. I'm done with this specific drama, and pretty much 99% done with the whole genre of fantasy idol drama in Chinese dramaland. And may you never live in a world that actually functions like the world you have in this type of fantasy idol dramas. Thank you for watching. I'll be back. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.